just to the east of Andalusia. Let's zoom in here and go back to, we'll just go up and down this line and see what we're looking at. And we'll take a look at velocity. So right over up, it doesn't look extreme right now in terms of rotation on the Fort Rucker radar, but if there were going to be a tornado with this or some very strong damaging winds, it would be right over the op area. Kinston, uh, Elba knocking on your doorstep right now. Uh, you need to be in your tornado safe spot. Tornado warning in effect. Andalusia, you're still in it, but I would be sh uh, shocked if they continued it for Andalusia. They might cut the back end of this warning off for Andalusia. The worst is certainly through Andalusia right now, which is some good news. Uh, so that's what we're watching. Op, Kinston, Elba, that is where the circulation would be if there indeed was one. Let's switch to the mobile radar and see if we can see anything with that. Yeah, so right over the op area, that is the region that we're concerned with here on radar. And you can even see what looks to be a mini uh, hook echo, if you will, or a reverse comma. And this is what we look for on reflectivity. So right over op, op, I hope you're in your uh, tornado safe place right now. If not, you need to be damaging winds or a possible tornado. Let's just go up this line real quick and then I'm gonna send it on over to Josh. I'm gonna go up this line just a little bit, take a look at the other areas that could be seeing rotation just east of Brantley. That near Jack, Arcus, Frisco, north of Elba, if you're familiar with these areas, uh, that is some very strong wind approaching Jack, approaching Arcus, Frisco. Again, if you're familiar with these geographical locations, if this isn't a tornado near Jack, it's some very strong wind. In fact, if we can put on wind there, uh, radar indicating out of Fort Rucker, 100 mile an hour wind. Uh, and Fort Rucker radar is close to this storm. So that's getting a good sampling of the storm pretty close to the ground. Uh, that is alarming. Uh, 100 mile an hour wind with that tornado warning that expires at 1145. That is certainly a powerful storm. I'll put it back on there. Yeah, we're 98 miles an hour, 100 miles an hour, doesn't matter at that point. That is a strong thunderstorm, a severe thunderstorm, severe wind, uh, 98 to 100 miles an hour. Tyler, we got a tornado warning in Barber and Pike until 1145. Tornado warning now for Barber and Pike send counties. Send it over to Josh. Josh has got it. All right, Josh, are you ready over there? I'll send it your way. Yep. All right, I'll send it on over to Josh. New tornado warning in effect. Uh, Josh. Yeah, absolutely. We've been watching this camera carefully for this storm moving out of uh, the Andalusia area. We'll go back to the home perspective here, and that'll set the stage for more of this continuing coverage. It's for this little nook, this little creek uh, here just a little south of downtown Troy. So we'll zoom you in here. There are multiple pockets of rotation that could be producing tornadoes, and one of them is right here on the southwest side of Troy. If you live near Mossy Grove uh, Schoolhouse Restaurant, you need to be in your safe place immediately. This is going to pass very near that local landmark. This is on Elba Highway south of downtown Troy. There's Troy. Uh, Half Shell Restaurant sits at that intersection. There used to be a country's barbecue right there. Uh, this is 87 running south out of downtown Troy. Troy, the south end of town, is technically in this tornado warning polygon. So uh, you need to be aware of that. We'll go to the, the rotation here and uh, see what we see. And uh, there it is. Man, that is, uh, that's an intense situation that's happening there where you're getting some pretty strong rotation, to say the least south of Troy. So this is going to cross over Alabama 87 south of downtown Troy. Let's take a view at the traffic cams in Troy. This will give us a good ground truth to what's happening there. You can see lots and lots of wind blowing sideways there. Uh, that's our view via uh, U.S. Highway 231 uh, there in the heart of downtown Troy. And you see people out driving in this. I sure hope it's necessary to be out driving in this. It's If it's not, you need to be at home. Uh, this is rough stuff here. This is the real deal. The possible tornado, though, is going to go south of downtown Troy. So let's go back to radar if we can here, uh, because the, the, the dangerous part of this storm is actually south of where you're looking at now. You can see some power, uh, power going out at that specific intersection there as the wind whips across the highway down below and the uh, traffic signals continue to kind of get blown about there as well. But the possible tornado would be south of this along on Elba Highway. See people out driving in this. Stop it. Don't do that. Go home. Um, you're going to catch coronavirus or a tornado or both. Go home. Be smart. Uh, this is not the kind of thing to play with. The virus or the tornado, not the kind of things to play with. You do not need to be driving around. And no, sir, turning your flashers on doesn't make it okay either. You need to be 
at home. This is nasty weather here. So possible tornado right here. This would be south of Troy along Alabama Highway 87. Movement with this is towards the east southeast. So I need you to get in your safe place now. If you live in Brundage, anywhere along Highway 93 uh, there from the north end of Brundage all the way through town to Hamilton Crossroads, you need to get in that tornado safe place right now. We have other ways of viewing what's happening in this storm. Let's take you now into downtown Troy. Uh, this is the Troy University camera, hopefully. I uh, will get a good perspective there, but uh, the other thing I would point out here is even if there is no tornado, there are some really intense winds in this. I'm talking 70, 80 miles per hour, and that's part of what's coming into Troy right now. So your possible tornado is right here, but there's a core of very intense wind that goes from Troy all the way to the coffee line. That, too, moving quickly eastward. Let's go into Troy now. If we can take that um, ALDOT cam again, the Troy University camera, uh, down for the count for now. It may have lost power. If we can go back to the ALDOT cameras there, and uh, you can see, man, that is, it is a very intense storm. So we have the tornado warnings now for Covington, Southern Pike, and southwestern Barber County. Uh, we also have severe thunderstorm warnings for this intense line of storms. You can see power is out. Uh, across many portions of Pike County. Now, this is an intense storm situation capable of producing straight line wind gusts in excess of 70 miles per hour and the possibility of a tornado within this. So uh, we've just been told traffic cams in Troy down as well. And I would imagine the reason for that, quite frankly, is they are all sitting in the dark. Power is probably out uh, in the Troy area now. So that's our Troy University camera, what it's showing anyway. That thing may have been blown down. Look at this. Uh, you can see it kind of in maybe a reboot reset mode there as it uh, looks like maybe our news director may be moving it around a little bit. But this is the view there. This is an apocalyptic view over Troy University on one of the stormiest nights we have seen in a long time. An intense line of thunderstorm winds buffeting not only Pike County, but many counties in our area with strong straight line wind gust. There you can see the trees. Look at those. Uh, that's uh, that's a solid 40 to 45 mile per hour wind that we're seeing there buffet those trees. And the, the worst of it um, is, is kind of through this area, believe it or not. It's actually worse than this down towards Brundage. So if you live at Brundage, uh, if you live at Tennell, if you live at Sandfield, uh, Josie, Banks, uh, Harrison Homestead, uh, you need to be in that tornado safe place. Because even if there's not a tornado, this is the kind of wind that can cause damage that is the same as an EF0 tornado. So get in that safe place. Lee has an update. Let's go over to her now and uh, check in and see what she's seeing. Lee, what are you seeing? Well, Josh, I just want to let you know that National Weather Service in Tallahassee is confirming a tornado for the tornado warning for Coffee and Dale County. So a confirmed tornado was located 10 miles north of New Brockton or 11 miles northeast of Elba. It's moving east at 60 miles an hour. So in Coffee County, it is a confirmed tornado. Tyler, can you see that on correlation coefficient over in Storm Track Zone? He's checking it out right now. Let's see, so he's checking uh, it's it. very messy. It is very messy, but it is a confirmed tornado now for parts of Coffee County. Again, this was 10 miles north of New Brockton or 11 miles northeast of Elba. And Tyler is checking out that rotation over there. What are you seeing? Yeah, uh, the, right now, this is the Tallahassee National Weather Service office. It's right over Arcus, uh, just south of Frisco, just east of Jack, north of Clintonville. It's this right here that they are saying is a radar confirmed. Is that what they're saying? A radar confirmed tornado? Confirmed tornado uh, for Coffee, Northern Coffee County. So this is right along the Pike County line here, and there's two distinct areas of rotation. This one in Northern Coffee County, northeast of Elba, is a radar confirmed tornado via the National Weather Service. You need to be in your safe spot right now, Coffee into Dale County, uh, Ozark. That includes you, a, a larger area. Let's. Uh, uh, and then one more again. So that's the confirmed tornado near Arcus in northern Coffee County. And then the other concerning location is now southeast of Troy approaching right now Brundage. Uh, that is a very concerning area as well in terms of rotation. And it's also, if not producing a tornado, it's certainly producing some very, very strong to damaging straight line wind. We have the Fort Rucker radar up here because it is very close to this. So it's getting a good sampling of this storm. And I want to just put an estimate here on possible wind uh, still showing up. And again, this does not necessarily mean the wind at the surface is 98 miles an hour. But what this means 
is that in all likelihood, just off the ground, winds are 98 miles an hour. At the ground, we're talking 60, 70, 80 miles an hour for potential wind in this area of Pike County, just southeast of Troy. Let's uh, take a look at our Troy camera and see what we're seeing. I know Josh was trying to show that and it was uh, giving them fits. And there, there it is now. So Troy University, uh, we're getting a look here. Lightning in the background, uh, trees swaying a lot. And what's important here is that Troy University uh, at the airport, there was a wind gust of 53 miles an hour. Uh, and that's not even the worst part of the storm. That was the northern side of the storm. So within the core of the storm, southeast of Troy toward Brundage, easily 70 mile an hour wind gusts. So still breezy in Troy, very windy with plenty of lightning. Uh, and I wanted to say one other thing I saw in National Weather Service, our, our chat rooms here, was that in Andalusia, the emergency manager did confirm power flashes and he uh, even mentioned a funnel cloud. So in Andalusia, you were watching with us just a little bit ago, we saw power flashes. We were suspecting that's what it was and emergency management is confirming that. So Andalusia, Covington County, that storm is severe. And then Pike County, we're looking at Troy right now. That is also a severe thunderstorm that is being warned for not only potentially producing damaging straight line winds, but a tornado southeast of Troy. Let me put radar on real quick, and then I'm going to send it over to Josh, uh, who will have a little bit more on all of our storms now that we're dealing with multiple tornado warnings. And it's this line right here. You're seeing kinks in the line, and I'm going to draw these circulations on here before I send it back to Josh. That is the radar confirmed tornado in Coffee County north of Clintonville, according to the National Weather Service in Tallahassee. And then this near Brundage right now over Brundage and looks like 231 getting ready to cross 231 there. Uh, that could be a second circulation. And if it's not producing a tornado, it is certainly producing severe wind. Power outages likely, wind damage likely as well. Trees go down in this uh, with the wet soil, the wet ground we have. Trees will go down easier power outages, power lines going down as well. So these are our two main circulations. Uh, but Josh, the, these storms are in an environment where uh, right now they may not be producing a tornado, but in a minute or two, they certainly could. I'll tell you this too, even if there's not a tornado on the ground in this, uh, there is still some exceptionally strong wind occurring within this. I'll go back to the home perspective and reset the stage. You're watching continuous weather coverage now on WSFA 12 News Montgomery. We are on for a confirmed tornado here in Coffee County and a likely one in Pike County and a very large area of destructive wind. This is not your garden variety straight line wind. Look at that. That's so this is that confirmed tornado situation in Coffee County. It's right there. You can actually in the reflectivity, you can sort of see uh, the mesocyclone in the in the center hole there. So uh, we'll go back into the analysis mode. I'll go into the tornado debris signature thing. Uh, and there it is right there. There's your tornado debris. So your tornadoes right in here. Uh, this would be south of Frisco. There's Alabama 51. There's Ariton. Fort Rucker would be right back over here. This is U.S. Highway 231 uh, running north and south. There's Hamilton Crossroads. Uh, this is uh, Troy High Highway right here. There's 167 going south to Enterprise, 87 going south to Elba. There is your tornado debris signature right there, just a little bit east of 167. We'll go back and uh, show you the velocity couplet on this. We'll just bounce back and forth between these different pieces of data. Uh, there you see right there, uh, very intense wind. And we've got to drive home this point. Even if you don't get a tornado out of this, you will have wind that is life-threatening uh, in northeastern uh, Coffee County right now. So from Frisco back into Dale County and Ariton, anywhere along 51 from Ariton all the way back down to the 167 split, get in that tornado safe place right now. Similar advice, in fact, identical advice up here into Pike County. These are incredibly intense winds coming into Brundage right now. So if you live near uh, the, the Walmart Distribution Center, if you live uh, back down in the downtown Brundage or anywhere near it, uh, you've got to get in that safe spot. They're in points east too. So Hamilton Crossroads uh, needs to be in that tornado safe place. Harrison Homestead, get in that tornado safe place and stay there uh, through at least 11, 1120 or 1130. This won't be lasting long. That's the one good news with all of this. The way this is moving, this is clearing out very quickly. So uh, it's going to take its time coming through, but not much of it. It will be through uh, very rapidly. Uh, for Montgomery, Hainville, Greenville, Selma, Wetumpka, Prattville, Millbrook, Auburn, Tuskegee, the risk of severe weather is over. 
uh, behind this line. But along and ahead of it, we have all kinds of nasty problems ongoing, uh, the most pressing of which is in northern Coffee County, where we have a confirmed tornado uh, on the ground right now producing debris. This is going to cross State Route 51 and then head on over towards Ayrton and Ozark. So if you live near Ayrton High School, uh, Alabama Highway 134 is out here. Uh, a little north of Ozark, most likely, uh, pardon me, 123, that's 123 right there that runs up into Ayrton. There's 231 right there, and your confirmed tornado is right back in here. It is wrapped in rain, but it's right here. It's, it's on 51, or just a tick north of it there, and it's going to move east like this. So I can't stress it enough, if you look from Ayrton to Hamilton Crossroads, over into southwestern Barber County, you've got to get in that tornado safe place right now. There's a confirmed tornado. It's on the ground. And even out Outside of that confirmed tornado, this is producing some massive wind gusts on the order of 65 to 75, maybe even 80 miles per hour in spots. That's enough to cause significant tree damage. That's enough to damage mobile homes. So you need to be in that tornado safe place. Even if there's not a confirmed tornado in your specific spot, you've got to take this seriously and get into that tornado safe spot. The good news, the debris signature becoming a little messier now. Hopefully that trend continues. In all likelihood, this was a brief tornado, but as I've said a couple of times now, we can't take that to the bank. Plus, the straight line wind threat in this uh, is as significant as any I have seen in the last 10 years. This is going to be one of those deals very similar to what we had this morning uh, in Chilton, Coosa, and Tallapoosa County, where I think there are going to be large swaths of destructive wind up and down this line. So we'll put a quick track on the line here, the leading edge of it, the worst of it, Southern Bullock, back into Pike, and then it kind of curves back around down into Geneva County. Movement here pretty quick, off towards the east uh, at around, I think the line itself probably moving close to 50 miles per hour. On that trajectory, gets to Enterprise in a matter of minutes. Ozark, Delville, Hartford, Abbeville, and Dothan uh, between now and midnight. And I think after midnight, it's not going to be too much longer until this is all in Georgia and we're done with it. So confirmed tornado with that storm. I want to take you back now uh, into uh, Covington County. Let's go and see what's happening down there. Um, again, if you live farther north, we're, we're not trying to ignore you, but the, the, the core of the severe weather is over for most of our area. From Union Springs, you've got heavy rain, nothing severe there, but it's Pike, Coffee, Dale, Barber, and Covington counties. Uh, where we are having all of the issues here. Uh, it looks like the initial tornado warning there has been uh, allowed to expire. So that's some good news. The worst of it now coming into uh, Brundage, Ayrton, Clio, Clayton, Libertyville, Texasville. Uh, this would be along uh, Alabama Highway 51 into Barber County. And uh, really, if you follow 51 from Clayton all the way down to the 167 split. That entire corridor there, really nasty weather. And I'm growing uh, gravely concerned about the damaging wind threat and the tornado threat here in southern Pike County, specifically Brundage. And then if you live from Brundage uh, along Highway 10 to Clio, you too, you've got to get in that tornado safe place right now. I want to toss over to meteorologist Lee Southwick. She's in constant communication with the National Weather Service and our partners in the emergency management community. And uh, Lee, are we hearing of any damage reports coming in? I know it's late in the night, but have we heard of any damage st reports starting to filter in down here? Josh, we did get a report that a house was hit in Babby um, by near Airport Road. So that was from that uh, confirmed tornado previously in Covington County. So we have unfortunately a report of a house being hit there. Um, and then if I'm going to head over to the Tallahassee National Weather Service office. I'm talking to three different National Weather Service offices right now. Tallahassee, Mobile and Birmingham all in, uh, cover this area in South Alabama that we're watching. We have extreme area of winds in northeastern Coffee County that's crossing into Dale that was crossing just three minutes ago um, at Ayrton. So we're going to continue to watch that closely. These extremely strong winds can cause just as much damage. It can knock off, knock over trees and power lines. It can blow roofs off of houses as well. So the wind threat needs to be taken just as seriously. You can see behind me, these are our tornado warnings that we're watching very closely. I'm going to bring this up to reflectivities and get a little bit better look 
at the rain that we have pushing on through to just about to cross into Enterprise heading through Ayrton. This is the area here that they were talking about where there are those extreme winds. They use the word extreme. So we're going to continue to watch that. That's from the Tallahassee office back in Mobile. Uh, they are watching a tornado warning in Mobile. So luckily we don't have to worry about that in our neck of the woods, but our thoughts are with them. There's a severe thunderstorm warning that's in effect right now for Barber and Bullock County. I can show you that as well. So again, we have this tornado warning that's in effect that included areas of Troy. Now just passing through Brundage, the thick of it, the heaviest rain, the strong winds. It also clips Clio and heads into Blue Springs. And then all up north of this, we have severe thunderstorm warnings. That is for the strong damaging winds. So. We have a severe thunderstorm warning right now in, Bar in Barber and Bullock counties. And then if we head over towards Mobile, they're watching this closely too. They have a tornado warning that's issued in Mobile County. There is a tornado warning coming for Geneva County. Okay, this is brand new. And a tornado warning extension coming for Dale County. This is from the National Weather Service office in Tallahassee. So we're going to watch this closely again. A tornado warning is coming soon for Geneva County. If you are in Geneva County, just be prepared to get into your safe spot immediately. And then we're going to extend. They're going to extend that tornado warning into parts of Dale County as well. So I'm tracking that here. But uh, Tyler, you have really good technology over there at the Vance Law Firm, Law Firm Storm Track Zone. And you're watching rotation right now. What are you seeing? These storms, as we all of us here continue to track, are extremely dangerous thunderstorms. Uh, you know, you can get damage from severe wind. It doesn't have to be a tornado. And that's what we're seeing right here up and down this line here. Yes, there are tornado warnings in effect. Yes, tornadoes are possible. Uh, but when we're talking wind uh, upwards of 70 to 80 miles an hour, if not stronger, that is the equivalent of a tornado. So. Again, it doesn't have to be a tornado to cause damage. Brundage, you are getting hit very hard right along 231 there. Uh, very hard by some very strong wind. Troy starting to calm down. That's some good news. Same with you folks in Banks. But Brundage points east. Uh, Louisville, Clio, uh, Barnes, uh, Ozark, uh, Edgefield. We're going to keep going off to the east here because these storms are hauling to the east at 50 to 65 miles an hour. So they're going to be moving at highway speed. So. If you're out ahead of them, you're not going to have a whole lot of time to, you know, get to your safe spot and you need to be in your safe spot, whether or not there's a tornado or whether or not your warning is a tornado warning or a severe thunderstorm warning, because these severe thunderstorms, even if they're not producing tornadoes, are producing wind of 70 to 80, if not 90 miles an hour. And that's enough to cause extremely extreme damage as we saw this morning with 70 mile an hour winds up in Tallapoosa, Coosa and Chilton counties. Uh, 70 mile an hour wind is nothing to mess around with and that's what we're seeing up and down this line here. Uh, some Brundage to Clio. Yeah, there is some very intense wind heading your way. I'm going to zoom in a little bit on that and put a track on it uh, for everyone at home to see where this very strong uh, wind is heading here over the next, uh, you know, 30 minutes or so, and you're only going to get a few returns. Uh, Clio 1136, so you got about 15 minutes. Abbeville uh, 1214, that's the far eastern side of this cone here. Uh, not getting a whole lot of locations showing up, but again, that tornado warning for Southern Pike County is not only for a possible tornado, but for wind that could be well over 70 miles an hour, and that can be destructive. Uh, blow trees down, uproot trees, power lines down, and that can certainly cause structural damage to homes, businesses, and other buildings as well. So if you don't have a tornado, it doesn't matter. Uh, very strong to damaging wind as well. Uh, the other tornado warning to the south there, that includes Elba Enterprise, Ariton, uh, Ozark. You are right on the fringe with that, so I would be in your tornado safe spot as well. And it's really two distinct locations of possible rotation, but again, it doesn't have to be a tornado, but if there is a tornado, it's just east of Brundage, east of 231, and then just northeast of Clintonville, inside of those two circles are very powerful winds, over 60 miles an hour, over 70 miles an hour, or it could also be a tornado in those two areas. That's what we're watching. They're moving east very, very fast. In fact, a radar sampling here, and here's the radar. See this circle right here where there's no data? That is the Fort Rucker radar. And that is getting a great sampling on these storms because it is not even a county's length away. And this is what that 
Radar is picking up on 85 mile an hour winds just along 231 south of Brundage there in the far southern uh, location of Pike County. 85 mile an hour winds not far off the surface. Let's sample the other storm here south of Frisco, northeast of Clintonville. That one spinning out 79 mile an hour winds just off the ground. Uh, and it doesn't take a lot to get those winds to come down to the ground when you have storms like this. So we're talking 60 to 80 mile an hour winds within these storms. It does not have to be a tornado. Brundage to Clio, down to Dill, Ozark, Asbury. Uh, those are all locations that could be seeing destructive wind here uh, in the coming 10, 15, 20 minutes or so. Be in your safe spot. I'm gonna send it on over now. We're gonna continue this team coverage here. Uh, Josh has got some new information. He is ready to go, Josh. Yeah, hey there, Tyler. Uh, we've been working kind of behind the scenes getting all this lined up. Um, can tell you there is uh, power out with trees down in McKenzie at Butler County. Uh, 75, 80 mile per hour winds in that. Um, uh, we'll keep looking for remote eight. We've got a storm chaser live in Troy right now, Dustin Rouson. We're working on getting him uh, up right now. Uh, he says the control room will have to pull it. I'm thinking Doug is working with him. Speaking of Doug Gooden, we, if we have him on the phone still, uh, I want to go live to Doug Gooden. Doug is a uh, photojournalist, video journalist. Um, not sure what their title is, frankly, anymore. They do so many amazing things that make our TV station go. And he's a really nice guy. He happens to live in Pike County. I want to check in with him now live. Doug, uh, this was a nasty, nasty storm that came through. Tell us what you're seeing there in Pike County. All right, we'll work on uh, we'll work on getting Doug their uh, cell uh, cell phones. Right, uh, this is a, just a crazy signature. See that little S right there? That is a sign of really, really strong wind. This is basically going to end up being like an EF zero tornado that's about twenty or thirty miles across. This is going to be one of the largest and most significant thunderstorm wind events we have had in a while. I think this will rival, maybe even exceed what we had in Coosa, Chilton, and Tallapoosa this morning. And that was bad. That was bad news up there. Uh, this may equal or surpass it in terms of its intensity with those strong straight line wind gusts. So um, we'll look for rotation. Frankly, it doesn't matter. Um, Rotation, no rotation. The key part of the story here is this incredibly strong wind now. Ariton, Ozark, Fort Rucker, down to Clio. Uh, you've got to be ready uh, and going. Uh, Chat remote eight, too. Dustin's working on that. All right, we're going we're gonna to take that in a moment. And again, I, I promise I am not playing words with friends on my phone here. We are actually uh, shuffling and orchestrating a lot of different things. Let's take remote eight behind me here. This is... Uh, this is from Dustin Routzung. Uh, he is our storm, one of our storm spotter friends. Uh, Dustin uh, is in Troy in the heart of downtown, and you can see it is very dark there in the heart of uh, downtown Troy. Nasty storm has come through. You see a few lights sparkling. He's looking back down towards Brundage right now. So that's Dustin Routzung's live feed there coming to us from Pike County. And uh, you can see the lightning's mainly quit in Troy. The worst of it's through Troy. Troy, you're good the rest of the night, believe it or not. Uh, this, this will uh, come and go pretty quick. And unfortunately, it has done that with this nasty shot of strong straight line winds that uh, blasted the heart of Troy and has probably created some damage very similar to an EF zero tornado in a lot of ways. So uh, we may have indeed had a tornado in Southern Pike uh, as well. We've saw, we saw not only straight line wind, but also embedded rotation within that. All right, we'll come back to me at the chroma key. We'll check in with Dustin throughout the evening. Thank you, Dustin, for your work there, and uh, we appreciate that. So still a possible tornado here, and even if there's not one, there's straight line wind strong enough to, uh, to create big problems. We know that because when this came through Troy, it created big problems. I want to check in now with Doug Gooden. He's live on the phone in Troy. This is our photojournalist who just uh, lived through this pretty nasty storm. Uh, Doug, tell us where you are and what you're seeing right now. Hey, hey Josh. Um, right now we're, we're sitting in the dark. Um, we, that was definitely a, a heavy amount of... Uh, hellfall that came when it first went through. A lot of lightning ahead of that, and uh, man, we're just uh, in the dark. Hopefully we'll get power back on here pretty soon.
All right. Uh, thanks so much, Doug. And I, Doug, I can't hear a word you're saying. So if you ask me a question, I'm not being rude and ignoring it there. So Doug Gooden reporting from Troy. Uh, Doug, you stay safe. Keep the family safe. The good news for you is the worst of it is past Troy. Now we're focusing in on this area down here, Brundage, back into uh, northern Pike, uh, or excuse me, northern Coffee in northern Dale County. All right, uh, it's 11:27 here. I'm going to step off screen for a moment because I can't help but notice radar has not updated. Yeah, the Fort Rucker radar. Fort Rucker radar not updating at all. I think has gone back down. So the Fort Rucker radar is back down. So what we are going to do here, Maxwell's uh, we're going to welcome in our WDFX viewers uh, right now as well. Is that Maxwell right there? Yeah. All righty. All right, let's do this. Let's go to Tyler at the Storm Track Zone. We're going to have to do some configuration work on WSI since the Fort Rucker radar is down. Um, so we'll go to Tyler now over at the Vance Law Firm Storm Track Zone with our Baron Weather Technology. Tyler, take us through this nasty line of storms. This is the real deal. Yeah, absolutely. We're getting reports here uh, of some damage in and around uh, Covington County as well as Southern Pike County. Uh, and the National Weather Service here just recently saying that the wind in these severe thunderstorms in Pike and Barber counties here, upwards of 90 miles an hour, we're pushing EF1 tornado strength uh, with this straight line wind. That's enough to blow trees over, to uproot trees, to blow power lines down, uh, to cause damage to structures as well up and down this line. So very messy here with all the warnings. I'm going to go ahead and just briefly take the warnings off so I can show you uh, where we're watching for this intense uh, line of storms here right over Clio, Louisville, Blue Springs, Clayton, uh, Asbury as well. Let's go ahead and put on some velocity to give you an idea of what we're looking at. It's this leading edge here heading east at 50 to 65 miles an hour, and it's along this line that there could be wind of 70 to 90 miles an hour. Uh, yes, 70 to 90 miles an hour. You don't often get severe thunderstorm wind speeds to that strength. Usually we're talking 60 mile an hour wind with straight line wind damage. This is a rare event. What do we have? All right, we had Northern Coffee, Central Henry County, another tornado warning. So we'll get to the warnings here. I'll go ahead and turn those back on so you can see where that polygon is. And bear with me with all these flashing polygons. There are a lot, a slew of flashing polygons right now. The red ones are tornado warnings. Here is that new one here, Coffee, Henry Counties. And then the orange polygons, yes, they're severe thunderstorm warnings. They're not tornado warnings, but it does not matter because these storms that are warned for severe are producing winds of 70 to 90 miles an hour, which is the equivalent of an EF0 or EF1 tornado. So just southeast of Clio, that is still a circulation we're watching. Just east of Ozark, that's likely what prompted that new tornado warning for Coffee and Henry counties. In fact, we can zoom into that. It's right there, Snow Hill. If you're familiar with that area east of Ozark, if you're driving from Ozark straight east uh, to get to 231, if you're familiar with, you know, all these locations between Ozark and 231 in Henry County, that is where we're watching a potential tornado in circulation. Josh here uh, sending me on back. Josh, what do you have for us? A bevy of new tornado warnings in Tyler. We now have added Geneva County and Houston County under tornado warning. So we now have Southeastern Pike, Southern Barber, um, most of Coffee County, Dale County, Henry County, Geneva County, and Houston County under tornado warnings. I'll clear the radar off the screen just momentarily because what I want to do is go over all of these warning polygons. There are many of them to be found. Again, as I mentioned, southeastern corner of Pike. That'll go away soon, though. Southern Barber County, uh, that storm producing really intense straight line wind gust. And then a tornado warning for Coffee, Geneva, Dale, Henry, and Houston counties. And that includes the city of Dothan. So uh, that is a very intense cluster of storms that is coming in uh, to the uh, downtown Dothan area right now. So that, uh, that's the, an update on the warning situation. Want to check in with meteorologist Lee Southwick. She's doing some analysis as well. We have all sorts of different types of radar systems that we use here to keep you up to date. And uh, Lee, take us through what you're seeing now, specifically that Geneva County storm that just prompted the new tornado warning. What are you seeing right now? Hey Josh, yeah, so we're tracking this. I'm gonna zoom in, you can see it behind me. So the strongest winds, areas of rotation as well, heading off towards the east. So if you are in Hartford, you need to get in your safe spot right now. This will continue towards Dothan. Dothan, the Circle City, you are also included in this warning. And then if we head up north, places like 
Ozark are also in this tornado warning or in a separate tornado warning, I should say, is going to continue to head off towards the east. I'll put this into play mode so you can see the general direction of this line that has multiple areas rotating as it heads east. And that will continue to push towards places like Abbeville, Newville, Headland, Kinsey, Dothan, all, all the way down towards Cottonwood even included in these warnings. And if we continue to watch as these head off towards the uh, east, I've stayed in constant communication with the National Weather Service offices. Now, just to let you all know, there is rotation that is nearing Hartford in Geneva County. I'm going to zoom in on this. So, and we will put this out of play mode. You can see that it's approaching Hartford now. I'll see if I can get some velocity up on here where we can see where that rotation is. But we're going to continue to watch this very closely. Look, there it popped up closely. So this rotation here, it's heading closer towards the Hartford area. Again, if you are in Hartford, you need to be in your safe spot right now. I'll move this to see if you can see it a little bit better. So here's our rotation. It is heading east towards Hartford, and you are not the only ones that are under a tornado warning. Places like New, uh, up towards Newville, Ozark, Abbeville as well. Tornado warning continues into Houston County. Rotation heading towards Hartford. Let's see what Mobile has to say. Uh, they are watching multiple areas of circulation. Some of them aren't even in our viewing area. We are not alone with this. We're going to continue to watch for a rotation uh, back in Mobile. We'll see if that moves off towards the east. That's more of a Florida issue. And then the Birmingham uh, National Weather Service Office, it continued its tornado warning as we saw for parts of Barber County. That lasts until 1145. So if you are still in the tornado warning polygon in Barber County, you need to be in your safe spot still, not out of the woods for another 10 minutes or so. Pike County was canceled out of that tornado warning though. You can see that here, we'll zoom in a little bit closer. So Blue Springs, you are still under a tornado warning. Abbeville is, Newville is, got new information, new updates coming in from the National Weather Service office in Mobile. So Baldwin County still uh, under a tornado warning in Alabama. Rotation in Northeast Dale, just crossed over into Henry County. Still radar indicated rotation, why we have a tornado warning. So Josh Johnson is tracking this very closely. Josh, what are you seeing in terms of rotation all up and down this line? Yeah, I I'm seeing a lot of rotation, frankly, uh, Lee, and not just rotation, but large pockets of strong wind gust as well. So even independent of tornadoes, this line's doing some damage. And I want to check in now with meteoro uh, not meteorologists, but tonight maybe he's a deputy meteorologist. This is Doug Gooden. Doug is a uh, photojournalist here at WSFA 12 News. Uh, Doug lives in Troy. Doug, uh, we talked to you a moment ago, but we couldn't hear each other. We think we figured that out. Take us through what you saw when this storm moved through Troy m minutes ago. Yeah, sure thing. You could definitely see the storm coming out of uh, Crenshaw County uh, headed this way. Just a lot of heavy lightning. And then you could just hit, hear, you know, small size hail just pounding the windows, you know, coming sideways. And uh, we moved to our safe place once the, uh, the warning hit. And uh, now we're sitting without power. Uh, so uh, hopefully uh, we'll get that restored. It's kind of like you said it. It's just died down now. There, there's some, there is some wind, but uh, other than sitting in the dark, it's uh, pretty quiet outside right this minute. Yeah, and uh, Doug, you're at a point now where, and you wouldn't know anything bad had ever happened. This stuff is, in case you're wondering, this storm is now out of Pike County entirely. It's in Barber County where it's causing more power outages there. And uh, Doug, have you seen or heard of any damage around the area? We talked about the power outages. Have you seen or heard any uh, traffic or uh, talk about any damage in that part of the world? I have not. I, I, I can see, you know, your, your, your normal uh, debris type uh, stuff you see in the roadway, you know, uh, uh, just here near my house, you see uh, leaves, small limbs, that kind of thing. So obviously some, uh, you're going to have that, but I haven't heard of any, you know, any accidents or anything like that happening. All right, Doug Gooden, hey, you stay safe, uh, keep the family safe, and I hope you have a good night and get some sleep. We'll take it from here. The storms are through you, so you can rest easy, my friend. All right, thanks, Josh. All right, appreciate you, get, appreciate you Doug. That was uh, our good friend Doug Gooden reporting from Troy there uh, with that intense line of storms coming through them. They're done, but now we've got problems. Next in line is Eufaula, Abbeville, Headland, Dothan.
uh, a nasty combination of damaging straight line wind gust and possible tornadoes going up and down that line. And you can see sort of as we uh, keep watching radar here, these tornado warnings just keep popping here. Let me zoom you in down and show you what's happening. This is all in the wire grass now. Uh, from your fall of southward there, and this keeps going back to old radar data. That's not valid data. I've removed it, uh, but uh, it, is, it just will not die. So uh, what we'll do, we'll go over to the polygons here, and that'll kind of take you through all of this. You live in Dothan, you need to be in the toy. Really, let's do it this way. If you live anywhere ahead of this line, you need to get into that tornado safe place right now. This storm has a history of producing power outages and damage. It will do more of that. There are going to be tens of thousands of you in the wire grass that are in the dark very soon, if you're not already, as this intense line of storms uh, moves on out of Barber County and eventually heads on into Georgia, but it's going to take another, I think, hour or so before we can finally flush this thing on out of here. I want to ch uh, check in with meteorologist Tyler Seabree. He's over in the Vance Law Firm Storm Track Zone. And uh, Tyler, this thing had calmed down a little bit back to the west, but now it is anything but. Uh, yeah, I think it's fair to say that uh, this thing really picked up, ramped up really, really quickly here. And we had the ingredients in place all along down in the southern half of Alabama, really the southern third of the state, especially southeast Alabama. It was a matter of would the storms tap into that and all those ingredients we had, and they certainly have this evening here. Everybody along this line here from Eufaula all the way down to the Florida state line, uh, if you're ahead of this line, if you're not under a tornado warning, uh, it doesn't matter. You're still at risk for wind of 70 to 90 miles an hour, which is EF0 to EF1 tornado strength here. A very dangerous storms, very dangerous situation here because wind along this line, whether or not it's tornadic in nature, is still enough to cause damage to structures, trees, power lines, and things of that nature as well. So we are all watching this line. You see a lot of flashing boxes here, a lot of flashing polygons, and orange ones, those are severe thunderstorm warnings. Red ones are tornado warnings, but at this point, uh, you do not, and I mean you do not need to focus on if you're under a severe thunderstorm warning or a tornado warning. Uh, treat them all if you're under a warning, in which case you are, if you're east of Ozark, east of Hartford, uh, everyone here along the Georgia state line down to the Florida state line, uh, you need to be in your tornado safe spot because if it's not a tornado, it's wind that could be up to 90 miles an hour, which is very, very dangerous here. So let's go ahead. I've got the Maxwell radar up because Fort Rucker radar is giving us fits and uh, is not showing us new data. So I've got Maxwell, which is the next best thing here. And I've got us zoomed in on this line here from Clayton. Likely some hail there in Clayton uh, to Eufaula. You're next in line. Baker Hill, Lawrenceville, Abbeville, uh, Union Caps, Newville, Barnes, Headland. All of you folks, if you're in any of these areas or near these areas, are in line for some very strong to damaging to destructive straight line wind that can cause damage here. Let's go ahead and put on base velocity. And yeah, if, if we're wanting to pick out the areas of rotation in which there could be an enhanced chance of a tornado, it's right near Edgefield and Lawrenceville, south of Baker Hill there, south, plenty south of Eufaula. That would be heading straight east toward the Georgia uh, state line there. So that would be one area that we would be focusing on for a possible tornado. The other one down to the south that has prompted a tornado warning, Caps and Newville, uh, that is another circulation that could possibly be tornadic. Again, if you're between Caps and Newville, this is possibly producing a tornado. And even if it's not, uh, it's something we're going to keep hitting on the head here is it does not have to be a tornado. As we learned this morning to the north, uh, you can have damaging straight line wind that causes significant problems. So that's what we're watching here. Yes, there's rotation. Yes, there could be a tornado. Yes, there are tornado warnings in effect, but it does not matter with all of the uh, strength of the straight line winds up and down this line here. Uh, is where we could be talking wind of 70 to 90 miles an hour. So if you're up against the Georgia state line, the closer you are to the Georgia state line, you've got severe weather heading your way and it could be damaging to destructive wind. So we've got that covered. Josh has more. I'm going to send it back to him. Josh, what are you seeing now after checking behind the scenes? Yeah, we've been doing a lot of analysis, checking out what's happened behind this line. Uh, Covington County EMA reporting some damage along County Road 70. That's on the east side of Andalusia. Uh, Pike County particularly hard hit. And I want to check in now with uh, our news operations manager, Jeff Harrison. Uh, between Jeff and Doug, 
if a bird builds a new nest in Pike County, we know about it. And uh, Jeff, take us through what you've seen tonight. Uh, you live in the eastern part of the county. Describe what it felt like and sounded like and looked like when this nasty storm came through the state. Hey, Josh. Yeah, thanks. Um, we got indication from uh, the radar images that we saw over the air uh, that you guys were providing that uh, it was it was getting pretty rough. And um, we uh, had power on and off for several minutes and were able to uh, keep watching you guys and could see that the, uh, the winds were increasing. And uh, then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I started hearing... Um, hail starting to hit the ground and hit the roof of my house. Um, I'm about a mile east of the Barber County line uh, or west of the Barber County line uh, uh, in the Enon community. So we could see, I can see off in the western sky, everything that's going on in the Troy area. I could see it was headed towards us. And so just tremendous amounts of hail. It was about pea size hail just, just pounding my roof. And um, I could hear larger um, hailstones hitting the roof and um, got out looking around. I couldn't uh, uh, see the larger uh, stones that hit, but it, it was very, very intense for a while. Uh, my family had uh, taken shelter in the house, uh, in our, our safe room, I guess you'd call it, and um, just the trees were just uh, just tremendously uh, whipping around. Uh, we have very large, mature pecan trees um, on our property, and I could see those just bending to the point I really thought they might uh, they might snap and uh, you know uproot. But um, walking around out here on the property, I don't have any power. And I can't really see what's going on, but I have a strong pine smell. You know, when you get in those storm situations, you can start smelling the uh, the pine odor. So I know I've got trees down somewhere on the property. And, um, but just intense, intense lightning and rain, not, not like I've seen in, in a long, long time. This, this compared to the Easter, um, compared to that as far as the intensity of what we had here. And we had roof damage uh, to some of our barns here on Easter Sunday. So I haven't been able to get out yet to see if we've had damage there, but I do I do know that we've had um, some trees or, or, or something like that that's, that's been blown down. But um, um, but right now, uh, no power in the eastern part of the county, as far as I can see, and I've actually been able to get out here on the side of my house and look around the horizon. I still see just intense um, cloud-to-cloud type lightning off to the east of me where everything, I think, has moved off. I look back to the west, and I can see on the horizon there must be power back on the uh towards Troy, but I can see, um, I can see the lights in the, uh, you know, in the sky back towards the west. So hopefully there's some power for folks back in that way. But out here on the eastern side of the county, right on the Pike and Barber line, there is absolute darkness out here. Well, hey, Jeff, we are so happy that uh, you and uh, Carla and Tyler are all safe. We hope you stay safe and uh, get some rest, my friend. I'm afraid you may have some cleanup to do tomorrow. Yeah, we'll uh, let you know, and we'll be uh, finding video if we can find it out in this darkness. I appreciate what you guys are doing, though. Thank you. All right. Thank you, too, Jeff. You stay safe. That was, uh, again, Jeff Harrison, our news operations manager here at WSFA 12 News. And we're not out of the woods yet. We've talked about what's happened in Troy, but uh, just a heads up, you live in Dothan, Geneva, uh, Abbeville and Headland, Shorterville, you've got to stay in that tornado safe place. There are numerous tornado warnings up and down this line. There are pockets of rotation uh, within this as well. If we can switch over, let's try this. Uh, that's not it. Uh, storm relative velocity. If we can show that uh, within this band of showers and storms, we'll see if we see any really distinct pockets of rotation. Uh, that is the Eglin Air Force Base radar. You don't see much uh, in the way of rotation at this point. So what I do see is this over here. That is some really intense, strong straight line wind gust that's happening there in Henry County. So that would be moving towards Shorterville, the Chattahoochee River there uh, as well. Uh, so strong straight line wind. This is Barber County. We have a shot from Barber County. We'll take that momentarily. This is via our sister station, WTVM News Leader 9 out of Columbus, Georgia. And you can see, look at that, uh, wow. some of that. That's wow. a strobe effect that's happening with their light, I guess. But the lightning and the wind, the rain, it's pouring there. And you'll notice their wind speed now uh, up around 20 miles per hour. So they have, uh, they're getting hit pretty hard there. Again, that's in Barber County. And uh, it's wishful thinking at the bottom of the screen, isn't it? The text says clearing, cooler, and windy. It's nice to have goals, I suppose. So that's I think their windy's view. right. 
Wendy is right. Yeah, two out of or one out of three ain't bad, I guess, right? You about 333, they'll put you in the Hall of Fame. So wind whipping around. That's Barber County, a live perspective now as intense thunderstorm winds pummel the county. And that's the same storm that moved through Pike County earlier. And we've had multiple reports of damage now beginning to stream in. We have some of those now. If we can check in with meteorologist Lee Southwick. She joins us now uh, with an update. And uh, Lee, looks like you've got some trees down in that uh, picture over there. Yeah, Josh, so we're starting to get a lot of reports in of trees down and of um, hail. Let me see if I can find exactly where this was posted. Okay, so this picture behind me was from Brantley. I've received a lot of damage reports out of Brantley. If you see any damage, you can safely go outside. Please send, send them our way. A great way to share your photos with us is uh, through our website. So make sure to share us or you can send it to us on Facebook as well if you are okay with us sharing it on our social media pages and here on TV. But this is a tree down now in Brantley receiving a lot more reports. Let me scroll through and see what I can get for you. We have uh, no power in Luverne, a lot of trees down near Troy. Hail and trees down near Troy near the rec center more specifically. And we are also tracking all of these storms moving through parts of southeast Alabama right now. I'm going to pull radar back up to get a better look. Now what Tyler and what Tyler was showing you earlier was the radar that's out of Montgomery. But luckily with this tool here too, we have a bunch of different technology that we can use to show you. So I'm using a different radar that's south of the warning area so we get a, a nice look at the tornado possibility the potential tornado in between these two but right now i'm using kevx it's the Eglin air force base radar and we're watching for some rotation here um this we're, it's near dothan as you can see a lot of this heading off towards the east of Dothan. Now I'll put this into play mode. Notice how it just passed over Dothan, the strongest of the winds as well. Um, and then that's one, that's only one tornado warning that expires in 26 minutes. Then also places near Newville still under that tornado warning. Looks like the worst just passed through you as well. Abbeville getting in the thick of it now, and then it will likely cross over into parts of Georgia. So again, I'm checking right now. I have my watch, my phone, an iPad and a laptop to receive all of your damage reports. Please send them my way. If you are okay with us sharing your photos on, on social media sites, on Facebook, on Twitter, and even here on the website as well, because again, we're receiving your photos and we'd like to share them, especially to give those who have yet to see this storm a heads up. And Tyler, some of you down in Southeast Alabama still have not seen the worst of this line. We're tracking it very closely. We have a new severe thunderstorm warning right now, including Geneva and Houston County. So still some of these counties are getting slammed in Southeast Alabama. Thank you. Uh, that is exactly what we're watching is the far southeastern corner of the state here that goes up against the Georgia state line all the way down to the Florida state line. So really from Eufaula to Dothan to the Florida state line, uh, that is where we're really honing in on for the most intense of these storms. And if I zoom in here, just uh, just east of Abbeville here, uh, there could be a circulation there producing possibly a tornado, but if not, some very strong to damaging winds here uh, going right up to the Chattahoochee River. So this is getting ready to cross out of our area into far southwestern Georgia here uh, momentarily, but not for the next about 10 to 15 minutes or so. You follow, you're about to get hit hard with some very strong wind of 60 to 70 miles an hour. Dothan, you are under a tornado warning right now. Let's go ahead and zoom in on that and show you what we're looking at. This again is the Maxwell radar, so we're not getting the best look, but if we put on reflectivity, there is some very, very heavy rain, possibly some hail there, getting ready to move into the north side of Dothan along 231 here. Um, very heavy rain, hail, strong damaging winds, and the possibility of a tornado. And again, we continue to reiterate this, all of us here, uh, just because it's not a tornado does not mean it can't be severe. Uh, you can have damaging straight line wind that causes more damage than a weak tornado. So again, if you're not under a tornado warning, you should still be seeking shelter and staying away from windows and most interior lowest level room of your home here. And that includes all of Houston County up to Abbeville, up to Eufaula, and then into the Georgia area, southwestern Georgia here. So up and down this line, uh, we're watching for damaging straight line wind, possibly tornadoes thrown in as well. 
and some small, possibly medium sized hail to an inch in diameter. And then when we're talking damaging winds, we're talking 60, 70, 80 miles an hour. So yeah, OK, so something we just saw on Twitter. Uh, Lee has it up behind her now just to give you an example of what we're dealing with with this line of storms. Just one example uh, over in Troy. I'm going to send it on over to Lee now. Lee, what pictures do you have and what is it showing? Just exactly as you said, just one example in Troy. This wind can cause a good amount of damage. It looks here like we have a fence that was blown down. Limbs were knocked down as well. We've also had multiple reports of trees down, of power lines down, of power outages. This stuff here, this is all due just to wind. So that is why you need to take our severe thunderstorm warnings just as seriously as tornado warnings. We do have severe thunderstorm warnings still in effect for parts of southeast Alabama. I'll jump over to that now, track it out for you. Let's see if we can get reflectivity up here again to get a better look at exactly where that rain is moving through and the gusty winds. Really heavy rain now over Dothan, down towards Taylor, up towards Kinsey and Headland as well. Uh, over towards Haleville, uh, Haleburg, excuse me. But in Abbeville, you are still under that tornado warning. Looks like the worst moving off towards the east, however. And let's see here. It looks like one of you may have just sent me more damage uh, photos from Troy. Let me check this very closely. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I'm going to pull this up, see if I can get this on Facebook for you. So bear with me here as I try to load up my messages. I don't know if this is going to work, guys. Looks like we have a little bit of a slow connection. But in the meantime, I can continue to tell you that we have been tracking this. Uh, we are continuing to watch severe thunderstorm warnings in southeast Alabama, tornado warnings as well. Uh, let's see if we can get some storm reports for you. Winds of 60 miles an hour. Uh, there was a wind, a damaging wind gust of 60 miles an hour that was near Sanford in Covington County. And then if uh, if we head over towards Tallahassee as well, guys, looks like this system continuing to push off just hanging out in southeast Alabama right now. So let's go back to the radar, zoom out, give you a perspective at what we're looking at, a little bit wider perspective. So here is southeast Alabama. You can see that live coverage right now from Barber County. Troy, you look a little bit calmer. You can see that here on the radar. Looks like the worst has passed you. We still have tornado warnings and severe thunderstorm warnings in effect for parts of southeast Alabama. The really strong wind winds up to 60 or even 70 miles an hour at times. We're continuing to keep in constant communication with the National Weather Service office in Tallahassee. They cover most of this area now where the worst of the thunderstorms are. Um, again, in Birmingham, they covered Parts of Pike and Barber County looks like the worst have now exited. That's the same for Mobile. They were back in uh, Covington County. But Tyler, I mean, these severe thunderstorm warnings still packing a punch. I'm zooming into Dothan now. Looks like we have some really, really heavy rain, some really gusty winds, places like Ashford right outside the tornado warning, but about to be slammed with just as much uh, the potential for damage, I should say, with these strong winds. Again, we're constantly getting damage reports. You can see it here behind me, lots of limbs down, trees down, power lines down. Unfortunately, once this passes through, this was just the first step of this story. Now we have to go into recovery and cleanup mode. And I think unfortunately, when the sun rises tomorrow, there's going to be a lot more damage that we are going to have to deal with. Yeah, I do think, uh, you know, there's going to be trees down, limbs down, power lines down, uh, at least some damage to structures such as homes, businesses, not necessarily, you know, some of the damage you can get in violent tornadoes, but at least enough damage that warrants a cleanup tomorrow. And right now, uh, these storms uh, are right over Eufaula. So you've got, uh, well, there goes another new tornado warning for southern Houston County, just south of Dothan there. And you can kind of see an appendage on that storm. So let's zoom into that. Just south of Dothan here, we're kind of straddling the Alabama-Florida state line there uh, near Fadette. Uh, hopefully I pronounced that correctly. Cottonwood, you are in that tornado warning. Love Hill. Again, this is southern Houston County south of downtown Dothan. Dothan, you are still under a tornado warning, but this is a new polygon here uh, for an area of rotation uh, near Fadette. And I'm going to go ahead and put on, again, we have our radars uh, up and running, but unfortunately, Fort Rucker, which would get the best look at this storm, has gone down and has been down for some time now. We've put velocity on you. We're 
too far from Maxwell, and I'm going to reckon to say that we are too far from Mobile as well. Yeah, but we can use reflectivity here to give us a pretty good look. Oh, okay, yeah, perfect. I'm going to actually, guys, let's send it on over to Josh. He's got a radar out of the Florida Panhandle. That'll get a better look at this Dothan Houston County storm. Josh, uh, you can go ahead and take it away. Yeah, Tyler, thanks so much. Uh, we've got the Eglin Air Force Base radar pulled up here down in the Florida Panhandle. That'll give us a little better perspective into these powerful thunderstorms that are roaring across Barber, Henry, and Houston counties. Tornado warning continues for the city of Dothan right now. And uh, you can see what we're looking at here. We'll go into the rotation phase of this whole thing here. Weak rotation there. Let me take you farther south, though, uh, show you what's happening along the Florida border. That's what right there, northwest of Graceville, Florida, is what they've issued that tornado warning for. There it is. There's your pocket of rotation. There's Alabama 103, 109, and 231. There's the state line community uh, right there. There's a service station fireworks stand right there. This is going to move uh, east-northeast right along the Alabama-Florida state line, and that's why the National Weather Service has issued that tornado warning that technically includes parts of southern Houston County. It's for this storm that is going to move right along the Alabama-Florida border. So that's what we're dealing with there. And really, frankly, up and down the entirety of this line, we are dealing with the risk of damaging wind. Now, the next thing we've got to watch is back here. Check this out. This is over towards Bruton right now. Pretty intense storm here, capable of producing damaging wind as well. Bruton back over to the J, Florida. This is moving east. This will clip southern Covington County, roughly along and south of U.S. Highway 84. Risk of damaging wind with this. So if you live in, uh, over towards Falco, uh, Pleasant Home, Carolina, Dixie, Stanley, Red Oak, Op, Oneika, down to Florala, uh, you need to be at least paying attention, put it that way. No formal tornado warning with this right now, but it is capable of producing some very intense thunderstorm winds. Let's take you back into the wiregrass now. We'll keep an eye on that. So Covington County, we're not going away from you. We'll keep watching that storm back to the west. It's still about an hour away or so, 30 to 45 minutes anyway. This is the greatest threat to human life in the state right now. It's this line of storms here that runs from Graceville, Florida, up towards Dothan, uh, raining torrentially now over Dothan National Golf Club. If you live near there, the worst of it's over you right now, uh, up towards uh, Hunt's Restaurant, the uh, National Peanut Festival there on the south end of Dothan. It's a really strong core of wind right there, maybe a few trees down in spots. The more intense uh, possibility of wind damage, though, is right up here along Alabama Highway 95. So this would be a little northeast of Pierce out towards Hellberg and Shorterville uh, in Henry County. So that's what we're seeing with that right now. We'll do a quick look for rotation. So far, so good on that front. We don't see a lot of intense rotation. There's some, uh, but it's not overwhelming. What we do see is some really strong wind showing up on radar. So... Uh, that's the kind of straight line wind similar to what we dealt with this morning uh, where you can have some pretty big problems. That can be a life-threatening weather situation in and of itself. All right. It is midnight in Montgomery, as Alan Jackson famously sung, sang about many years ago. Country song, if you're not familiar. Um, Montgomery's fine. Uh, Really, the risk of severe weather is confined to the southern tier of counties. If you draw a line with me, we'll say from Evergreen to Andalusia uh, to Geneva to Abbeville. South of that, it's right along the Florida border and then north towards Eufaula. That's really the only place left where we have a significant risk of strong to severe storms. Problem is, these are moving kind of east-northeast. So uh, if you live in Escambia, southeastern Conecuh, Covington, southern Crenshaw, Coffee, Dale, Geneva, Henry, Houston counties. You have a risk of severe weather. This wave is going to be in Georgia by 1230. But this wave back to the west, this is going to kind of linger right along the Florida state line, which means our southern tier of counties will have to pay attention to this. And this is going to take a little longer to make its way across the state. But if you are watching us in Montgomery, Hainville, Greenville, Camden, Demopolis, Marion, Selma, Prattville, Millbrook, Wetumpka, Lake Martin, Auburn, Tuskegee, Union Springs, Troy. The risk of severe weather has ended over central Alabama. And for that matter, the rain will end soon, too. We'll dry out 
pretty quickly here. It's just this far southern tier of counties where we still have the concerns. Those concerns right now are headquartered in southeast Alabama. Strong straight line wind gust from Shorterville, southward along Alabama 95 to Gordon 52 for, uh, back towards Dothan 231 south out of Dothan. Lots of heavy rain, thunder, lightning, gusty wind here and the potential exists for a tornado in this as well. Want to check in with meteorologist Lee Southwick. She's got an update on the weather situation as she is hearing and seeing it. She's in constant communication with the National Weather Service and doing her own off-air analysis as well. Lee, walk us through what you're seeing right now. Tons and tons of damage reports, Josh. Tons of trees down, tons of power lines down. Uh, we just got a report that a roof was blown off of a building uh, in Troy in Pike County. All of these photos that you're going to see behind me, most of them are from the Troy area. This this one is from Troy. It looks like we got some trees down. Now you're just going to see a lot of these photos. They look like they're repeating themselves. It's just widespread damage all across parts of central and south Alabama. So again, we have power lines down. That's a power line down. And then more of these trees are down. Limbs are down. Power is out again. Just a ton of these photos. Unfortunately, this is the scene. Most all of these again, just from Troy. Um, I've received Photos of trees down just north of Op uh, near Covington County or uh, near uh, Crenshaw in Crenshaw County and in Covington County, I should say. This is Luverne, a tree that just missed this person's house, April Owens house in Luverne. Trees down in several areas. This is just north of Troy. Seeing trees down also looks like a little bit of ponding there on the road. So lots of water. Uh, let's see if we can get more of these to load. This looks like it's a video of a tree down. Let's see if we can get it to load up for you guys so we can get a better look at exactly what people are dealing with here. The situation is that it is midnight right now, so unfortunately we don't have a lot of daylight to check out all of this damage. I think a lot of people are going to wake up tomorrow morning, unfortunately, to a very sad situation. So we're going to continue to track all of this damage that comes on in. This looks like it's from a little bit earlier. Yes, this was from Kellyton. This was from this morning's storms that moved through in North Alabama. Uh, same with this in Dadeville, which we had the side of a barn blown off. So multiple pictures coming in now. Thank you for sending these in to us as well so we can share all of your damage photos. It looks like a whole lot of trees down. Looks like we got another damage report. Numerous trees down, roads blocked. This is near Goshen in Pike County. So a roof blown off near Troy. Uh, trees down in Troy, trees down in Goshen, trees down near Andalusia and north of Op and in the Op area as well. Uh, we'll see if we'll, we'll check in with the other National Weather Service offices real quick, see if they're tracking anything. Uh, Tallahassee, they are uh, still tracking that line of storms. Looks like that's mostly pushing into parts of Georgia now. I know that Tyler has his eyes on that. He will update us if he sees anything new coming in as well. I'm going to refresh this quickly, see if we can get any more photos coming in. We have a whole team behind the scenes that's working quickly, very quickly to uh, uh, accept your photos so we can get these posted and shared. This is not more damage in Troy now. This is what we're going to continue to see again. This was Henderson Highway in Troy. So now we'll just continue to watch for these storms to slowly push off towards the east. Try to get another look here at your radar. This is again out of Florida. And we're going to continue to watch for this to move on east. I mean, we have Tyler Seabree behind the scenes. We have Josh Johnson behind the scenes. Tyler is using our storm track zone right now, our Vance Law, Law Firm storm track zone. It has really cool technology. You can look at the rotation. We have a rotation tracker on there as well. Tyler, what are you seeing now using that technology over there? Yeah, Lee, other than the storms in uh, the Wiregrass, uh, Houston County uh, specifically right now, other than that, we are watching back to the west, and I want to touch on this. I know Josh did just a few moments ago. There are warnings, a plethora of warnings here in the Florida Panhandle, just north of Pensacola, uh, as well as Crestview. Uh, there's a, well, wouldn't you know it, there's a new severe thunderstorm warning for Covington County. Uh, and that includes the city of Andalusia. You've got another severe thunderstorm heading for you. After earlier, uh, we were getting reports and seeing on our camera in downtown Andalusia of power flashes, numerous power outages in Covington County, including the city of Andalusia. And you're about to get hit with another intense thunderstorm here. So let's go ahead and take you into that storm that is right over Bruton right now. Uh, past you in Atmore, you guys are fine. It's east of 65. Uh, other 
uh, locations to watch out for. Andalusia points south to the Alabama Florida state line there. So Andalusia is included in this and it goes right up uh, to the county line there to the east as well. And within this we have the mobile radar up. We can look at velocity and you're not going to see a whole lot here, but these brighter greens, yeah, that's certainly, you know, significant in the sense that there could be some strong damaging winds within that. We're not seeing a uh, return like we were seeing up in Pike County there where we were seeing winds of 80 miles an hour or stronger. This is not as intense, but there could certainly be some strong and damaging winds there right over Bruton, uh, Century, Florida. And that storm is moving northeast. That's why the polygon has gone into not only the Florida Panhandle, but into far southern Alabama as well, including the city of Andalusia here. And I'll go ahead and uh, see if I can get you an exact expiration time for Covington County. It looks like that severe thunderstorm warning uh, with a tornado possible wind to 70 miles an hour for uh, Conecuh, Covington and Escambia until 1245. Uh, so that's what we're watching for right now. So Andalusia, it won't be to you guys for a while. You've got about uh, 25, 30 minutes till it gets to Andalusia. In fact, we can go ahead and put a tracker on the most intense location of that storm. And here's a, a potpourri of locations here. So Horn Hill, 1234. Uh, let's see, Babby, 1234 as well. Op, 1237. And you're going to see a few locations that have unfortunately already been hit once with severe weather this evening. And if that storm holds together, it will be heading towards some locations that have been hit already. Elba, 1245, Enterprise, 1251, Ozark, 101. So this is within the next hour or so. All of these locations could see strong to damaging wind gusts if the storm indeed does hold together. So that's uh, one thing we're watching is this now new line of storms that is straddling the Florida Alabama state line here coming up from the Mobile area. A lot of severe weather down in Mobile as well with tornado reports coming out of Mobile County, Baldwin County. Uh, Gulf Shores is under a warning. Fairhope, Pensacola, uh, and then again spreading into far southern Alabama here, including parts of Escambia and Covington County. Andalusia is included in that. And we can go ahead and pull up our uh, Andalusia camera just to see if we're getting anything there. It looks like the view we have right now, all the power and lights are on. That's good news. I don't see anything in terms of, uh, well, there's one tree we can look at. I don't see anything. Well, there's some lightning in the distance and in all likelihood that's from the storm yet to come for Andalusia in the southern half of Covington County. Uh, the trees aren't blowing uh, extremely strongly right now in Andalusia. That's good news. And again, the view we have right now, at least uh, the power is on. So that's certainly some good news in the sense that uh, any power that went out earlier seems to be, at least in that view, back on. Uh, let's go ahead and turn on velocity and look in this storm again. And that's uh, what we're looking at wind-wise here. These areas of brighter green right along the uh, Florida-Alabama state line right over Bruton. Uh, this could certainly be some wind to 60 miles an hour, if not stronger here. We're getting... Uh, returns on this storm from the radar in Mobile, which is right here. So it's a pretty good sampling of this storm here. I think that's a pretty good indication of what we're seeing right along the Florida Alabama state line. That is what we're watching for. But this warning goes all the way up into Covington County and does include a good chunk of Covington County, the southern two thirds of the county. So Andalusia, if you're heading to, toward op from Andalusia, that is uh, one area that could be seeing uh, some damaging winds here shortly. And let's go ahead and just you know, put a sample on there. So 35 miles an hour, that's one. We'll just click a few other spots just to give you an idea of what this storm could be producing. Uh, again, not as intense as the storms we were tracking just a bit ago. That does not mean you should assume that it's not going to be intense, though. 42 miles an hour. So again, not necessarily showing anything overly concerning, but enough that a severe thunderstorm warning has been issued by the National Weather Service in Mobile for uh, southern Escambia County as well as the southern two thirds of Covington County. So that's our new severe thunderstorm warning. And again, there are just flashing warnings everywhere uh, from Mobile to Pensacola to Andalusia. But we're still watching Houston County in the Dothan area as well. Two tornado warnings that include uh, parts of Geneva and uh, Houston County. And let's go ahead and put our Maxwell radar back on. I'm just going to show you reflectivity here because it's so far away that we're not going to get a good view with velocity products. But right now, uh, Dothan, I, I believe the worst is done in your uh, neck of the woods here, just east of downtown Dothan. Uh, if you're taking 231 
to the Georgia state line. That is where uh, the most intense part of the storm would be uh, damaging winds or tornado potential there. Cottonwood, if you're familiar with that area, far southern Houston County here, right along the Florida state line, getting close to the uh, southeast corner there where uh, Georgia meets Florida. Uh, as well as Alabama, that is where some very strong to possibly damaging winds are headed. Downtown Dothan, though, good news is, yes, you're still under a tornado warning. Still be in your safe spot, but I think the absolute worst in Dothan is over for now, unless we get more storms behind, which is certainly possible. So if you're down in the wiregrass, you're not technically done yet. You may be done with this round of storms, but there are more back to the west which we are focusing on now. In fact, let's go ahead back and look over there once more because these are the storms yet to come. Uh, they are moving east and east northeast. That is why you're seeing these polygons take aim at far southern Alabama here. Bruton, I think the worst is past you. Andalusia, you've got another strong to possibly severe storm heading your way, uh, riding right along that Alabama Florida state line. So uh, those are the storms that are yet to come. A lot of them will stay in the Florida panhandle but we're going to see some of those creep into far southern Alabama, and that's something we're watching. So I think Lee is trying to grab my attention. I'm going to send it back to Lee who says she can touch on a few damage uh, photos here, and then eventually we'll get back to Josh, who's got another look at our storms in Dothan, or do you want to go to Josh first? I think I'll take it first right. just to we'll overlay. go to Lee. Yeah. yeah, we're just going to look at some quick damage photos for you. This is out of Brundage behind me. Looks like there's some damage to a gas station there. Looks like we might even have some windows blown out. We have seen hail. We have seen uh, flooding uh, rains. Clio in Barber County had, has multiple trees down in the area. Roads are blocked uh, in the Richard Crossroads area in Barber County. Numerous trees down along Highway 431 as well. And another thing I want to point out now, Josh, we are still under a flash flood watch in parts of central Alabama. So we have the flash flood watch for central Alabama, and then we have the strong to severe thunderstorms in southeast Alabama, possibly some more stronger storms about to move in uh, closer to Andalusia. Now they're under a severe thunderstorm warning. We are nowhere near out of the woods just yet. What are you seeing? Yeah, same thing you're seeing. Trouble in South Alabama for sure. This is live now uh, via our storm spot, uh, spotting partner. This is Dustin Roudzong signal coming in, into us now from Pike County. And you can see some significant damage there in Pike County. And uh, look at that. Just for scale, those are people right there. See the helmets? There's the legs right there. Whatever that is, it was big, and whatever that is, it is no more. You can see some significant damage there. Uh, this would be in the Troy area in Pike County. So Dustin Routzung uh, giving us this, uh, this perspective. We'll leave this up, and what I'm actually going to do is text Dustin and ask him precisely what we're looking at here because uh, in the darkness, it's tough to say. He did uh, update me moments ago. Uh, he's reporting tree and structural damage on Montgomery Street in Troy, Murphy Street, impassable in Troy. Uh, so um, that is, again, our storm spotter in the field, uh, Dustin Routzung, who is doing us a, a fine job tonight in keeping us up to date on what's happening there in the Pike County area uh, right there. He's... Uh, uh, he's down here in the in the in Troy itself, Murphy Street, impassable. Uh, his other report uh, was that uh, tree and structural damage on Montgomery Street in Troy. So the three dots are up. That means he's literally texting me right now. This is weather coverage in the year 2020. So I promise uh, I'm not playing words with friends. This is actually important information that everything runs through phones now, even for us. This is at Waltz Gymnasium, Montgomery Street, and Three Notch. So that's in Troy. That's what's left of Waltz Gymnasium there in the Troy area at, at the intersection of uh, Three Notch Street there in downtown Troy. So significant damage has occurred here. So far, we have not heard any injuries yet. We've heard uh, some unconfirmed reports of structural damage down in Covington County along County Road 70. Uh, some reports of structural damage here, obviously. This is structural damage. Thus far, we have tens of thousands of people in the dark, the precise number up in the air, but uh, so we can safely say tens of thousands are in the dark in southeast Alabama. So for Montgomery, Prattville, Millbrook, 
we were spared. The worst of it stayed south of us, but this is why we declared a first alert weather day. This is why we lit the day up red in the seven-day forecast. This is why we started talking about this five days in advance because we saw this kind of potential uh, in this pattern. And as we got closer to it, it became clearer this was going to be a problem, particularly in our southern counties. And indeed, here we are now facing that problem. Uh, face on, I'm afraid. So that's uh, that's the shot there in Troy. Let's go and take you back to radar now. Uh, Max 1, if we can. There's WSFA first alert radar. Lots and lots of uh, heavy rain, thunder, lightning, gusty wind down here. We'll turn the uh, warnings tab on, so we'll update you on the watch warning situation. And as of this hour, could it be... There are no tornado warnings in the state of Alabama. This is Georgia. This is Georgia. Severe thunderstorm warnings cover most of eastern Geneva, all of Houston County, basically, most of Henry County, too. Tornado warnings up to the northeast in Georgia. And then back to the west, we've got a severe thunderstorm warning. This is back into Covington County. See it over here? Uh, I'll get there in a minute, I promise. This is for a storm that's coming out of Escambia County. So severe thunderstorm warning for Escambia County from Bruton back towards Carolina, Dixie, Falco, Pleasant Home School, Stanley, Red Oak, Op, Onica, Horn Hill, and Babby. We'll turn the radar back on the screen here so you can see what we see, which is a pretty nasty little cluster of storms over here coming out of, uh, really this is starting to fill in and just sort of become one big mess, but there you have a pretty intense cluster. And then this out here, Southern uh, parts of Covington County, south of Florala. Got to keep an eye on this. This is a, uh, these are cells that are still sort of out by themselves. These are the types of cells that without much warning can start to rotate on you if you're not careful. So as a meteorologist, we have to be careful and we have to make sure they're not doing that. So far, so good. Don't see much in the way of rotation down here. There's Eglin Air Force Base right down there. That's the radar we're using. This is Interstate 10 running through Florida. There's Lockhart, Sampson, and that's uh, Co uh, Covington County. That's Geneva County. So this is down into the state of Florida. The, the severe thunderstorm warning that we have for Covington is for this storm uh, back off to the northwest. We'll see what we see from a uh, wind perspective on this. There's no rotation whatsoever in that storm right now. And frankly, we're a little too far away from the radar to get much good wind data at this point. So what we'll do, we'll flip the standard radar back up on the screen here. And uh, there you have it. Heavy rain, thunder, lightning, gusty wind involved with this. The worst of it, frankly, is in Florida. As you cross into Alabama, you go a little north and you get into some... Uh, this, is, this, is, this row has already been plowed, uh, so to speak. This has already had a line of storms come on through. And as a result, uh, the air is a little cooler and more stable in this part of the state. We'll take you into Andalusia now live. This is a, a view via our camera there in the heart of historic downtown Andalusia. Man, what a difference an hour or two makes, huh? When I showed you this earlier tonight, it was just brutal. Raining sideways, trees whipping around, um, power flashes possibly in the background, uh, and power flickering. Now, though, things are calm and quiet in Andalusia. We hope it stays that way, but that storm down to the southwest may have different plans. We'll watch and see how that intensifies as it moves closer. Uh, we're checking with meteorologist Tyler Seabree now. Tyler's monitoring the latest uh, conditions around the state and uh, will give us a quick update before tossing to Lee. She's got some uh, updated damage photos over there, so we'll get to Tyler and then Lee. Tyler, using our exclusive Barron technology over there in the Vance Law Firm Storm Track Zone, walk us through what you're seeing with this storm as it moves into Covington. Yeah, thank you, Josh. That is really, uh, other than far southeastern Houston County, east of Dothan, the only uh, storm in town is entering or exiting Escambia County and entering Covington County. Unfortunately, these are folks who have already been hit by severe weather, so take it a little more serious than you may otherwise would because you might be out and about trying to clean up, take pictures. Uh, if We need you to be safe. Yes, we appreciate pictures. We appreciate videos. But never put your safety or your life in jeopardy to get photos to send in to us. So be safe right now. And you have another thunderstorm capable of very strong wind moving in to the southern uh, two thirds of uh, Covington County there. It doesn't look overly impressive coming off the mobile radar, but that warning is still there. Uh, so we're going to continue talking about it where these brighter reds are. Again, it's nothing that's jumping out, uh, but there could be some strong gusty winds heading into Covington County and you know, the potential for these storms to quickly strengthen like we saw just earlier. We went from a quiet radar to intense thunderstorms very fast. So if you're near Andalusia and point south, be uh, 
a little extra cautious here over the next 30 minutes or so. We'll watch that as it heads toward Enterprise, Ozark, Sampson, uh, Geneva. Uh, we'll see how far that goes and stays intense. We'll have to monitor that. But other than that, uh, there's not a whole lot going on. Storms exiting southeastern uh, Alabama into Georgia, which is great news. But we'll watch these storms between Mobile and Andalusia and see where they head. Uh, but now we're in the process of getting all of our photos and videos in. And Lee is over there doing a great job of pulling up all those photos for you. So, Lee, what do you have now? What damage are you seeing? Well, Tyler, first directly behind me, great find. You're the one who tweeted this. This is out of Brantley, Alabama, and I like this. It's a two photo that kind of connects. So you can see that trees are down just really quick, though, to touch on what you were just talking about, areas near Andalusia and Op. I was just talking to a viewer who says that, as we know, power outages are extensive in that area. So if you are watching us right now and you have friends or family within that area where the strongest uh, storms are about to move on in, and I'll quickly pull up a radar again to give you a better idea of where that is. You see the strong uh, wind and heavy rain now starting to push closer towards Florala. It will include places near Andalusia. Looks like eventually Samson, Kinston, Carolina. If you are in that area, or if you know people in that area, it would be a nice thing to do just to text them, give them a heads up, because as Tyler just mentioned, some of you may even be outside right now cleaning up some of your friends or family trying to assess the damage and maybe a tree or a limb was weakened earlier in the round of storms. And with this next storm moving on in, we don't want it to knock down any of those weakened limbs or trees and create more damage and potentially hurt you or your friends or family. So make sure to give them a heads up. We have more reports coming on in. This one now out of Clio, yet again in Barber County. A tree was down on house, uh, but this is on Brendage Street and 700 block of Brendage Street, but everyone is out and safe. So that's great news there. In Blue Springs in Barber County, multiple trees were down on the 3300 uh, block of County Road 53. And in Eufaula as well, we have trees and power lines down on Bullock Circle. In Northeast Texasville in Barber County as well, trees down, trees blocking Highway 131 as well. And so we're going to continue to watch for all of this damage, of course, in the cleanup process. But again, as we continue to watch these stronger storms slowly push east as well. I'll put this into play mode behind me so you can see the general direction. And we still have a severe thunderstorm warning in effect for about 26 more minutes. And that includes places like Florala. It extends up closer towards Andalusia. Just getting a quick check, Tyler, on the rest of our chats with the National Weather Service offices in Tallahassee and Mobile. Uh, right now in Geneva County, looks like we have, they measured a 50 mile per hour wind gust. So that can cause a lot of damage, of course. This is why we ask you to take our severe thunderstorm warnings just as seriously as the tornado warnings. So we're not out of the woods just yet because yes, there may be no more active tornado warnings right now in Alabama, but we do have these severe thunderstorm warnings that we're watching very closely. Other than that, Dale County had a 54 mile per hour wind gust, Coffee County, and Kinston measured a 56 mile per hour wind gust. Uh, power is out on Camp Groudon Road in Ozark. Let's see if Mobile has anything for us. They are watching a lot of active weather right now down in Florida. So Tyler, that looks to be about it right now. I know as soon as I toss it over to you, I'm gonna get even more reports. We also have a ton of damage photos coming in as well. Again, a lot more where this came from, a lot of trees. Josh Johnson has been behind the scenes tracking this very closely. Josh, what have you seen in the past couple of minutes? Yeah, some interesting things. Uh, one of the reasons, maybe the reason, Fort Rucker radar is down. The National Weather Service office in Tallahassee is having major communications problems tonight. They are down. Their backup office is Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas. So the tornado warnings and the severe thunderstorm warnings being issued for the Wiregrass counties are actually initiating now at Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas. How about that? So uh, in case you're wondering, while we've had uh, a lot of scrambling behind the scenes tonight to get you the best data, and the best part of it is I work with such a, a wonderful, talented, intelligent, resourceful team of people. If you were watching at home, you probably never even knew that we were facing major uh, radar and uh, communications problems with our National Weather Service partners in Tallahassee. Uh, we were able to kind of uh, move data around there and keep you up to date fairly seamlessly. So severe thunderstorm warnings, Southern Covington now. More severe thunderstorm warnings covering parts of Geneva County, Houston County, and Henry County. 
that's it. Other than that, there is no more risk of severe weather in Alabama. If you live in Bruton, you're done. Andalusia, as soon as this storm clears, you'll be done. Laverne, no more severe weather for you. Greenville, Troy, uh, Eufaula, Union Springs, Tuskegee, Montgomery, Prattville, Millbrook, Wetumpka, Selma, Marion, Demopolis, Camden, all done with the risk of severe weather. This is a purely South Alabama phenomenon that we are tracking right now uh, in these far southern counties of the state. So if you live around Florala, strong wind for you. That'll head on over into Geneva as well. Um, that's Maxwell radar. We'll switch over to Eglin Air Force Base. It'll give us a little closer look in at all of this. And what I want to do is animate this because once we do that, you can get a little better perspective on all the motion here. These storms are moving sort of from southwest to northeast. Now, the individual storms trying to move northeast, the cluster as a whole is moving more easterly. So the key question will be, a couple of them actually, what does this thing do? This thing's been producing tornadoes for a while now and tornado warnings. It looks like to me this heads down towards uh, Choctahatchee Bay and the, the Gulf of Mexico. I don't think this is an issue for us. This, though, right here will have to be watched as it lifts back towards the east northeast. This will probably clip sections of Geneva County and Houston County. And the environment here is still supportive of damaging wind gusts and perhaps some tornadoes. So we're not out of the woods yet uh, if you live in the Wiregrass counties. Covington County and the five Wiregrass counties. Really, frankly, I think that's about it. Yes, I know there's still a tornado watch in effect for Crenshaw County. I, I just don't see a big risk there. I think they're probably done. But Covington, Coffee, Geneva, Dale, Houston, Henry counties, those six counties in the southeastern corner of the state, those are the ones we're going to have to watch, I think, for another hour, hour and a half. This will be long gone, I think, no later than 3 o'clock and probably closer to 2 o'clock. Uh, again, if you live north of a line from Andalusia to Abbeville, you live north of there, you're done. Go to sleep. Um, Greenville, you're done. Hainville, you're done. Camden, you're done. Montgomery, raining torrentially, but no more severe weather for you. This is a South Alabama situation. Let's take you in and show you more about that situation now. So these storms, very fast moving, part of a larger complex of storms. The individual cells moving northeast, the overall complex diving southeast. So the net motion ends up being almost due east here. Now, within each of these cells, there will be the potential for some small hail and strong straight line wind gusts. We've seen all kinds of damaging wind gusts across Alabama tonight. Uh, the most intense part of this right now is actually in Florida. See this right down here? That's kind of the strongest part of it. It is a little weaker up here into east central uh, Houston County. We'll stop the animation here. It can be a little distracting after a while. Then we'll go into the analysis tab. I'll pull up the lightning. We've seen a ton of lightning in these storms tonight, and we still have it. See all those strikes showing up on radar there? That will continue. This is an intense cluster of storms. So is this around Graceville. This is going to clip uh, really the southeastern half of Houston County. If you draw a line that kind of cut the county in half from northeast to southwest, it's mainly that corridor right there, Gordon, Cottonwood, uh, in that area where we're going to have the issues with this cluster of storms. We do not see any rotation. And I'll say this too, I haven't seen strong rotation in southeast Alabama uh, in a while now. Um, ever since we had the confirmed tornado over at Coffee and Dale, uh, the rotation down here has been very uh, weak, very messy. That's good. We like that. We like weak and messy uh, in this sort of scenario. So damaging wind, our main concern, but we'll have to keep an eye out for any transient pockets of rotation that can develop in here too. Go back to the home perspective here and reset the stage. Uh, back edge of the rain is through Selma now. It's dry at Marion. No more rain at Demopolis or Linden. Camden, the rain is ending right now too. It is in Clanton as well. Uh, and then back to the southeast, we still have rain and lots of it covering much of central, east, and south Alabama. But the severe weather risk is confined to the southern row of counties. I'll clear the radar data off the screen here and take you straight to the watches and warnings. Um, I'll be honest with you, I don't think there's any more severe weather in Butler or Crenshaw. I know you're still under a tornado watch, so respect that, uh, but I really think it's really just Covington County and these eastern Wiregrass counties. Still a flash flood warning in Lee County. We should mention there are roads washed away in Lee County right now as a result of flash flooding. So that part of the forecast verified as well. We told you this would be a prolific rain producer and there could be some flooding issues. Unfortunately, that proved correct as well. 
So that's what we're seeing. It's now 1230 in the morning. We have severe thunderstorm warnings covering much of South Alabama. No active tornado warnings at this moment in time. So I think what we'll do here, I think we'll send you back to programming for now. Now we're just, we're not going away for a long time, but frankly, there's not much left to talk about. These storms are behaving pretty well. Uh, we don't see any sign of any life-threatening wind. We don't see any sign of rotation either. We've had significant damage tonight across Crenshaw County, Butler County, Pike County, Coffee County, Dale County, and parts of Barber County at least. Some of that may have extended into Henry Houston and Geneva counties as well. We'll have to wait on reports to come in from those areas. Tens of thousands of people are without power in two places, the southeastern and southern counties of the state and still in central Alabama, Chilton, Coosa, and Tallapoosa County, there are still power outages to be found there. Damage also reported tonight in Covington County, near County Road 70, particularly on the east side of Andalusia, with strong winds causing sporadic damage over into Op, Onaka, and Florella as well in the eastern part of Covington County. So most of the damage tonight in the southern counties and southeastern counties of the state. So, anything else, Lee? We do have more damage photos. More damage photos. We'll get to those in a minute. Tyler, you got anything else? Uh, no, nothing new, no. Tyler has nothing new. What we'll do, we'll go over to Lee. She'll walk you through more of these damage photos. Uh, then we will, she'll come back to me, and if we don't see anything threatening, we will head back to programming so that we can rest our voices a little bit and uh, you can keep staying weather aware in these far southern rural counties. Now, obviously, if we see anything life-threatening, we will be on very, very quickly to update you on it. So, Lee Southwick, take it away. Show us some of those damage photos you've seen from across the area. Hey, Josh, yeah, I'm going to do that in just one second. But first, if my news team is listening, this just in from our friend Dylan Federico. He is a meteorologist at one of our sister stations over in Columbus, and he just reported that there is a fire off of Leroy Road in Barber County in progress south of the Walmart. So if our news team could start to check that out, um, but there is a fire off of the road. So some breaking news there. Meanwhile, Damaged pictures out the wazoo, unfortunately. This is a photo out of Troy. It is a snap tree, snap limb down on a truck. Unfortunately, looks like that car may be totaled. And I'm just going to scroll through Tyler Seabreeze Twitter because he has a lot of really good damaged pictures here. This one out of Rocky Head, Alabama. Looks like a lot of limbs down, trees down as well. Uh, this will continue. Uh, just scrolling on through tons and tons of damage photos. Again, we showed you this earlier, another tree down. It crushed a fence. We've had reports of trees down on Troy University, Troy campus. Now I know we were looking at our camera there earlier, but it, I believe we can't see anything directly from our camera. Tyler's checking it out right now for me. Um, looks like our news team was checking it out. Looks calm from what we can see, but we do have reports of trees down in Troy as well. Um, of course, all over Troy, but at, on Troy University. And then, of course, in Clio, we've had trees down, Blue Springs, Eufaula, Texasville as well. Uh, then if we head over towards the Tallahassee chat, let's see if they have anything going on. In Dale County, uh, wind gusts of 46 miles an hour. Coffee County, wind gusts of 48 miles an hour. Dale County, wind gusts of 49 miles an hour. So a lot of really strong winds. That's where we're getting all of these damage reports in and all of these pictures from. So again, multiple trees snapped all across central and south Alabama. The uh, cleanup process is going to be extensive. Now I believe, Tyler, are you, do you have anything new? Am I tossing it back to regularly scheduled programming? Okay, no, Josh Johnson is gonna wrap this up for us really quick, but Josh, again, every time I try to pass it to you guys, we get another uh, alert and it looks like we might even have a severe thunderstorm warning that's clipping parts of Covington and Escambia County as well, Josh. Yeah, we're watching that uh, Kevin moments ago there, Lee. Thank you for showing us all those photos and uh, that fire. We we had the uh, mobile alert center live feed pulled up earlier from WTVM. Uh, so I don't know if they can, if the TMPs can get that up in the control room or, or, or what our situation there is probably sparked by lightning. So uh, that's what we're watching there. Now, that severe thunderstorm warning Lee was telling you about, it's this one down here. It's for this cluster of storms that we've been tracking for a while. That's for Covington County. The core of this, and frankly, really, I think the only severe wind threat uh, would be 
here and here. So these two cells, these two cores, one uh, near Pleasant Home down to Falco, and then another one along 331 South, uh, that would be near the Lockhart community, um, and then back north uh, towards Op. There's 331, there's Stedman, Oneika. This is all moving east, so a heads up for Kinston, Lowry, and Hakoda. You might get a quick burst of wind out of this, I will tell you. This does not look nearly as dangerous uh, as some of the storms we had, we were tracking earlier on this evening. So we'll go back to the broader, wider perspective. And there you see it. Uh, rain coming to an end now. Gusty wind lingers back here. It's not damaging, though, for the most part. It's just gusty wind and lots of rain. The severe weather threat is confined to the row of counties down here, mainly touching the state of Florida, mainly Covington, Geneva, Houston. Um, and even in Covington County, the back edge of this uh, really, this is the only intense cell left, and it's going to be in Geneva and coffee any minute, and even it, it's not very strong. Most of the strength of these cells has gone away, uh, mainly down to the south here. That's, that's, it's setting up along Interstate 10 now, and as this continues to move towards the south, watch what's happening here. The overall line is moving southeast. Now, the individual storms are moving northeast, but the whole thing here, the whole kit and caboodle, is driving southward. So... As that continues to happen, these storms that are moving into southeast Alabama will likely weaken. Now, if they don't, we will come back on and tell you that. But for now, uh, we're going to send you back to regularly scheduled programming on both WSFA and WDFX-TV out of Dothan. We're not going anywhere. We'll be here all night uh, keeping you ahead of this weather situation. But for most of you, the threat of severe weather has ended north of a line from Andalusia to Enterprise to Abbeville. You live anywhere north of that line, you're done. There's just leftover rain. South of that line, the threat should end in the next 30 minutes to one hour. We will keep you ahead of the storm no matter what it throws our way.